five seconds. This is the Saturn V. It's the most powerful rocket ever built. This vast structure, 110 meters long, is a symbol of how much effort and energy we need to extend our reach into the extremes of space. This entire vehicle, everything up until here is just fuel and engines. We have the power transfer. There's a simple reason why rockets like these need so much fuel. And that's because to escape the Earth's gravity, they need to create a huge amount of thrust. All told, the Saturn V carried two and a half thousand tons of fuel. Enough for the vast engines to produce the seven million pounds of thrust required to send the rocket to the moon. But delivering enough power to escape the Earth was only half the problem. A much bigger challenge was keeping the crew alive on the journey. Project Apollo was about more than just brute force. The first problem was that your crew were sitting on top of a rocket with the explosive capacity of a small nuclear weapon, and if they survived the launch, the engineers then had to find a way of protecting them against the void of space and provide them with something in the way of life support. The success of human spaceflight depended on finding ways for people to survive in space completely removed from the safety of the Earth's atmosphere, astronauts would have to be provided with everything that they needed to stay alive. And from the start, it was a process of trial and occasional error. In April 1960, Russian Yuri Gagarin became the first man to successfully orbit the Earth. And he was followed into space just three weeks later by the American astronaut Alan Shepard on his Mercury Redstone rocket. Shepard was in space for just 15 minutes, but he and Gagarin had proved that mankind could survive in the vacuum of space by taking an artificial atmosphere with them. This is a real Mercury capsule. This carried Gordon Cooper into space in 1963, and look at it, it's tiny. There's about the space of a telephone box in there carrying an astronaut around the Earth. To survive in space, you need to bring enough oxygen with you with enough pressure behind it to make it breathable. The Mercury system solved this by filling the capsule with 100% oxygen. And that worked well, that kept the astronauts alive, but it came with an enormous risk. The use of pure oxygen systems survived into the Apollo program, the mission that was to land men on the moon. The first stage of that mission was due to launch in February 1967, carrying three astronauts, Gus Grissom, Edward White and Roger Chaffee. They would orbit the Earth to test the Apollo hardware. But just three weeks before launch, the crew entered the craft for a full systems check. It's not clear what's happened next, but it's thought a stray spark from the electrical system started a small fire, which in the 100% oxygen atmosphere quickly turned into an inferno. Trapped in their capsule, the astronauts burned to death in seconds.
pure oxygen atmospheres were never used again. By the time the next manned mission, Apollo 7, launched in October 1968, the cabin was filled with a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen, more like the air we breathe on Earth. Only when in orbit, in the vacuum of space, was the atmosphere replaced with pure oxygen. But at such a low pressure, it didn't pose the same fire risk. But for these longer Apollo missions, where the crew would live in their capsules for more than a week, there were other problems to solve. If you want to survive in space, it's not enough just to provide oxygen. You need to remove the waste gases, the waste gases of respiration, carbon dioxide. If that accumulates, it causes drowsiness, confusion, later coma, and eventually death. In 1970, the crew of Apollo 13, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swiger, encountered a catastrophic failure of their life support system, an explosion which left them short of oxygen and without the ability to remove enough carbon dioxide from their atmosphere. And that would lead to one of the greatest dramas in the history of human space exploration. Hey, Houston, we've had a problem here. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. The crew of Apollo 13 were on their way to the moon when an explosion in an oxygen cylinder caused the command module to lose power and life support. We had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. It forced the crew to evacuate to the lunar landing module, the LEM. Go ahead, Mike. I want you to get some guys figuring out minimum power in the LEM to sustain life. Although the LEM was capable of making the return journey to Earth and the crew had enough oxygen and food, there was a crucial flaw in the plan. The LEM didn't have enough filters to remove the carbon dioxide from the air, and the spare filters from the command module wouldn't fit the LEM's systems. If they couldn't find a way to remove the CO2, the crew would suffocate and die long before they reached home. What followed was the greatest piece of DIY in space history. The command module filters were adapted with cardboard and sticky tape. Around the world, millions watched, breathlessly waiting to see if the improvised filters would work well enough to bring the crew safely back to Earth. Lawrence Houston, you're looking good. Welcome home. Thank you. Since then, we've got better and better at sending people into space. We can now not just keep people alive for a week or so, we can keep a presence in space permanently. For more than 10 years, astronauts have been living and working on the International Space Station, supported by an artificial atmosphere just like the Earth's. 50 years after we first started going into space, we now live and work there. We explore and we do science. And to do that, we've had to create much more sophisticated life support systems. The International Space Station does a pretty good job of creating what we're used to down here on Earth. One atmosphere of pressure, enough light, heat, water, 21% oxygen, something that looks an awful lot like home. And to have achieved that in orbit, in an environment so uniquely hostile to human life is a tremendous achievement. The International Space Station is a home away from home. But although we can replicate an Earth-like atmosphere, living in space for extended periods presents another serious challenge to our physiology. Simulating the effect of being in orbit is almost impossible on the Earth. But there is one place we can go, where for just a few seconds we can experience what it's like to be in space. This Airbus 300 is used by the European Space Agency. It's been specially modified for what's known as parabolic flight. First, the pilots fly the plane steeply upwards. 
before guiding it over the top of the ark into an equally steep dive. And as the plane falls away, it's as though gravity disappears. <laughs> and that's weightlessness. It doesn't last long, but for just 20 seconds, it's as though we've escaped the pull of the planet. No. That's fun. <laughs> So fantastic and really hard to describe all of those dreams you ever had of flying are just suddenly for real. Nothing in our evolutionary past has prepared us for this. So this looks like pretty good fun and it is. When gravity disappears temporarily, it's fantastic. But like anything else, you can have too much of a good thing. When you have to live in weightlessness, it can have serious consequences for your body. For astronauts on the International Space Station who are weightless for months at a time, there are many potential hazards. For a start, Simple necessities like eating, washing, and going to the toilet become fraught with difficulty. But removed from gravity, our physiology also changes. Released from the constant pull of the Earth, our muscles start to waste away, and our bones, no longer bearing weight, lose calcium, becoming weaker and brittle. And since the heart doesn't have to work so hard to pump blood to our head, it too becomes weaker. Because of these changes, the astronauts on the space station have to exercise for hours every day to retain their strength. In time, we hope to travel further into space and we'll need more elegant ways to cope with the lack of gravity. But in the meantime, our colonization of orbit is a remarkable stepping stone. It's extended our habitable range to hundreds of miles above the Earth's surface and made us a spacefaring species. A remarkable journey when you consider that not even 250 years ago, no one had even left the ground. That journey that takes us away from the surface of the Earth out into the atmosphere and beyond into space is the purest expression of our desire to explore. And it's that urge that makes us want to find ways to explore new extreme environments. It's extended our reach from the narrow but comfortable envelope at sea level to the deepest reaches of our ocean, to the top of our atmosphere, and eventually out into space. And in the future, who knows where that will take us, possibly to completely different worlds. Premier League football next with Newcastle and Arsenal both in action on Match of the Day 2. <laughs>